Welcome back to Linear Algebra at Marinopolis College. Today we'll begin discussing Chapter 3 on linear systems. In this chapter, we'll address the following questions. First, what is a linear system? Second, how can we solve linear systems? Third, how many solutions can a linear system have? And finally, what is a homogeneous linear system? Our first goal is to introduce vocabulary for the basics of linear systems. We're going to begin by studying linear equations, which you've seen as equations of lines in R2 and as equations of planes in R3. More generally, a linear equation in Rn is an equation of the form a1x1 plus a2x2 plus dot 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 plus anxn is equal to b. Here, the letters x1, x2 through xn are the n variables of the linear equation. Each variable is multiplied by a real number that we call a coefficient. So the numbers a1, a2 through an are real numbers called coefficients. And finally, on the right-hand side of the equation, we have the number b, which is a constant. OK, let's look at some examples. We said that in R2, a linear equation is the equation of a line. So an example of this might be minus x plus 2y is equal to 4. We have two variables, x and y. The coefficient on x is minus 1. The coefficient on y is 2. And the constant is 4. In R3, we have to introduce a third variable. So an example of a linear equation in R3 is 3x minus y plus z equal to 0, which you already know is the equation of a plane that passes through the origin. One thing to pay attention to is that sometimes we have an equation like x plus 3z is equal to minus 1. And there's something hidden in this equation. In particular, we have this term plus 0y, which we normally wouldn't write down because the coefficient on the y variable is equal to 0. When we get to R4, we have to introduce another variable. So let's do that. We might have the equation x minus 2y plus z. And now I'm at the end of the alphabet, so I'll just take another letter, like w is equal to, say, 1. OK, so when we go to R5, we would need to introduce a fifth variable. In R6, we'd have to have a sixth variable, etc. You can imagine that we're going to start running out of letters. So one thing that we'll do is instead of using a different letter for each variable, we'll use subscripts. I can rewrite this equation using subscript variables instead of different letter variables as follows. I'm going to replace the variable x by the variable x1. I'll replace the variable y by the variable x2. I'll replace the variable z by the variable x3. And finally, I'll replace w by x4 equals to 1. So these are all, these are both the exact same equation. It's just that I've renamed the variables. OK, now that we've seen what we can do to write down linear equations, let's look at some of the things that we cannot do so that we can quickly identify linear equations. One thing that we cannot do is we cannot multiply together the variables. For example, 3xy equal to 4 is not a linear equation because I've multiplied together the variables x and y. Something else I can't do is use special functions like sine or cosine or other trig functions or exponential functions or logarithmic functions. For example, the equation x minus 3 sine y equal to 0 is not a linear equation because of this sine of y term. We should also look out for powers that are not 1. Notice in the definition of linear equation that the power on each of the variables is 1. So an example of an equation in R3 that would not be a linear equation might be 3x plus 2y plus z squared equal to minus 1. The reason that this is not a linear equation is because of the power 2 on the z variable. Of course, you could, we have to avoid fractional powers as well. So another example of an equation that would not be linear, say in R4, would be 4 square roots of x1 plus 3x2 plus x4 equal to 5. And here, the reason that this equation is not linear is because of the square root of x1. 
OK, so just a quick remark to summarize. In a linear equation, the power on each variable must be a 1, and we can't multiply any variables together. So that concludes this video to introduce to you what linear equations are. And in the next video, we'll introduce the idea of a linear system.